Good afternoon. My name is Wendell Hesrick. I'm Public Safety Director of the City of Pittsburgh. To my left is uh, Scott Schubert, the Chief of Police. First off, on behalf of the city, our hearts go out to all the victims that have been involved in today's tragedy. These incidents usually occur in other cities. Today, the nightmare has hit home here in the city of Pittsburgh. As you're well aware, a Tree of Life synagogue at 5898 Wilkins Avenue at 954 this morning, calls were received at the Allegheny County Emergency Operations Center that an active shooter was inside the building. At 955, officers were dispatched. Apparently, an initial confrontation between the subject and the officers occurred, injuring two of the officers. Two additional officers were injured during the altercation. Those were SWAT officers. Multiple agencies responded to this incident this morning, and without their courage, this tragedy would have been far worse. Those include numerous state, county, and federal agencies, as well as neighboring EMS services, along with the city of Pittsburgh. Additionally, the dispatchers, the physicians, nurses that assisted in this incident should also be commended. There were 11 fatalities as a result of the shooting incident. There were no children. There were additionally six injuries to include four of the police officers. That does not include the suspect. Chief Schubert has visited several of the injured officers. He will update you as well as the doctor will update on, give you a current update on the victims that are currently being treated. Personally, I would like to thank every agency that responded today, as well as the dispatchers, the FBI. As you are aware, this is a federal crime and both SAC Bob Jones and U.S. Attorney Scott Brady will discuss that. I would like to take a few minutes and allow Scott Schubert to discuss the officers, what they encountered when they arrived at the scene this morning. Chief. Thank you, Director. Uh, as the Director said, first and foremost, our hearts and thoughts and prayers uh, go to the, to the victims of this and to our officers. Uh, who responded. Uh, I can tell you, uh, by the time I got there, uh, they were already starting to extract people from in, and watching those officers run in to the danger to remove people and get them to safety uh, was unbelievable. And for the SWAT officers, our SWAT officers and SWAT teams from around the region who were there, who went into that active shooting and were able to apprehend that actor uh, I, I can't speak more for, for the courage that they have. Um, two of the officers that were hit, as the director said, were the first responders to the scene and were engaged. And uh, they're both in stable condition. And, and as the director said, two from our SWAT team uh, during an engagement uh, inside the building were struck as well. Uh, they're in stable condition. I was able to talk to two of the, the four, and uh, as soon as we get out of here, we're going to go back and, and uh, see them again and, and see their families and thank them for the job they did and for saving lives. Uh, and, uh, but we can't, we can't not forget those victims inside that synagogue who lost their life. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Bob Jones. I'm the special agent in charge of the Pittsburgh Office of the FBI. Thank you, Wendell. Thanks, Chief. Certainly, the actions this person took today were hateful. We're in the early stages of this investigation, and over the next several days and weeks, we will look at everything in the suspect's life, his home, his vehicle, his social media, and his movements over the last several days. At this point, we have no knowledge that Bowers was known to law enforcement before today. I want, I want the people of Pittsburgh to know that the FBI will work around the clock to get them the answers to why and how this happened. That said, 
We ask for the public's patience in the coming hours and days as we work through this investigation. This is the most horrific crime scene I've seen in 22 years with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Members of the Tree of Life Synagogue conducting a peaceful service in their place of worship were brutally murdered by a gunman targeting them simply because of their faith. The suspect's full motive is unknown, but we believe he was acting alone. At this time, the FBI has significant resources in and deploying to Pittsburgh from our laboratory division, our critical incident response group, our Office of Victim Assistance, and our operational technology division. I can't say enough about the actions of the Pittsburgh police, the Pittsburgh police SWAT team, and the Allegheny County police. Had it not been for the quick and heroic response, this would have been much worse. Thank you very much. Now I'll turn it over to Governor Wolf. Thank you. I'm Governor Tom Wolf, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> and today, uh, words simply, um, I can't express the sadness that all Pennsylvanians feel for what happened today. I want to give my condolences, first of all, to the victims of this tragedy, their families and their friends, and to this community. The shooting is being investigated by the FBI as a hate crime. My heart breaks for the members of the Jewish community. Today, all of Pennsylvania mourns with you. Anti-Semitism has absolutely no place in our Commonwealth. Any attack on one community of faith in Pennsylvania is an attack against every community of faith in Pennsylvania. And I want the Jewish community across the Commonwealth and across the country to know that we stand in support of you as we together mourn this senseless act of violence. The Shabbat is a time for reflection. It's a time for finding peace, not for violence. Pennsylvania's Jewish community is strong, it's vibrant, and resilient. Now is the time more than ever to come together and to support each other. I have spent today with first responders, with local leaders, and I am in awe of the bravery displayed by law enforcement, those folks who help to keep people safe, to aid victims, and to prevent further tragedy. Federal, state, and local law enforcement are working in concert to investigate this tragedy and to maintain public safety. At the state level, the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency and the Department of Health are in contact with local officials to assist with any, any unmet needs. The Pennsylvania State Police have been on the scene already and are coordinating with federal and local law enforcement. Pennsylvania State Police's SWAT team, the helicopter, K-9 units, and bomb, techni bomb technicians have all responded and are all assisting. My thoughts right now are focused on the victims, however their families, their friends, and making sure that law enforcement has every resource that they need. In the aftermath of this tragedy, we must all come together and we must take action to prevent these tragedies in the future. We simply cannot accept this violence as a normal part of American life. These senseless acts of violence are not who we are as Pennsylvanians, they're not who we are as Americans. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Scott Brady. I'm the United States Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Today is a tragic day for Pittsburgh, and it's a tragic day for our brothers and sisters in the Jewish community. On behalf of the Attorney General and the entire United States Department of Justice, we want to express our deepest and most heartfelt condolences to the victims and their loved ones, the Jewish community, and everyone who was affected by this terrible and unspeakable act of hate. I spoke with General Sessions today, and he wanted me to also express his condolences and know that he stands with Pittsburgh and with Pittsburgh's Jewish community. The actions of Robert Bowers represent the worst of humanity. We are dedicating the entire resources of my office to this federal hate crime investigation and prosecution, and we expect to file criminal charges shortly, perhaps as early as today. Please know that justice in this case will be swift and it will be severe. I want to echo the comments of Chief Schubert and the bravery that was exhibited by the SWAT teams of Pittsburgh Police and the Allegheny County Police. They ran toward gunfire to keep people safe. And they exemplified today the best of all of the traditions of law enforcement and of the Pittsburgh Police. 
Know that we're working together with our federal, state, and local law enforcement partners to gather all the facts. Uh, the cooperation of law enforcement has been outstanding. I was at the scene uh, today, which, as was stated by, by Special Agent Jones, uh, was a, a horrible scene to witness. And yet, all of the federal, state, and local partners stood together uh, in concert and are working together to solve this. We deep, deeply appreciate the response of the Pittsburgh police, the FBI, Allegheny County Police, and all of our law enforcement partners who are working so hard. Know that we will work day and night for justice for the victims of this crime. And please know that we'll continue to update you as we are able. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Don Yealy. Uh, I am a professor of emergency medicine, and I oversee emergency medicine for UPMC and the University of Pittsburgh. At about 10 o'clock this morning, we became aware of the incident, and very quickly we were able to uh, put together the resources that we have available every day at the Level 1 trauma centers. That includes UPMC Presbyterian and UPMC Mercy, and we notified Allegheny General. We were able to dispatch to the scene three physicians who have expertise in EMS working with peace officers and our outstanding EMS providers to help assess the scene and to help accomplish triage. We're blessed here to have the finest EMS providers in the country, and we're blessed because people have invested in people and in resources over decades to make sure that we have that type of excellence. The patients were all transported to one of three facilities. Four patients came to UPMC Presbyterian, one to UPMC Mercy, and the final patient went to uh, Allegheny General Hospital. Um, I can give you a listing of what uh, those particular patients were. I obviously cannot give you personal information. Uh, first patient was a 61-year-old female who had extremity soft tissue injuries that required cleaning in the operative room. She is doing well now and recovering. Next was a 70-year-old male who had gunshot wounds in his torso involving major organs inside of his uh, abdomen. He underwent uh, what we call a damage control laparotomy. That's an operation to get the initial injury under control where we expect to have to do a second or third operation later. He's now having that second operation now. He's obviously in critical condition. A 55-year-old officer was also seen who had multiple extremity wounds, uh, went to the OR again for repair and cleaning of those wounds. And then finally, another officer had um, essentially soft tissue injuries and grazing and was having a complete evaluation, looks to be doing fine now. Those are the four patients at UPMC Presbyterian. Another officer went to UPMC Mercy, had an extremity injury that required intervention and evaluation in the operating room. Again, that officer is doing fine. Happy to answer any questions if, if you have those. Did it seem like uh, perhaps any sort of special type of, of bullets may have been used that would uh, create any extra damage or something to that extent? Uh, I don't have any direct knowledge about that, but not from the injury pattern. It did not appear that way. Were these patients generally shot multiple times? Or each uh, there were some with multiple injuries and some with singular injuries. Again, this is something that we're prepared to take, of, take care of every day. I'm very proud of the team. We had extra physicians available, nurses available, uh, to take care of whatever could happen. When we first heard of this, we knew that there were a few patients injured, some dead. We did not know the size and the magnitude of this, and so we were prepared to take care of as many as uh, were necessary. Do you know about the patient at AGH? I do not. Do you have the age of the other two officers? Uh, and, and the, the officer that went to Mercy is 27, and the fourth one at Presbyterian, I don't know his age. He's younger than me. Are they all male officers? Yes. Can you give us a breakdown of the patient conditions? I would describe two as in critical condition. They're in the ICU right now, one of whom returned to the operating room. The others um, are doing well. We would not, uh, they're obviously seriously injured, but I would not describe them as critical. I'm sorry, the second. Uh, yes. We'll take a few other questions one at a time, please. A question for the special agent. Thank you. Can you talk, sir, about uh, the caliber of uh, 
ammunition and perhaps the weapon that was involved? I don't know the calibers at this point. We think one was an assault rifle, and we know that the suspect had at least three handguns on him at the time. Sorry, what? Uh, an assault rifle and three handguns in the facility. Is it clear how he obtained them? Don't know at this time. Do you know whether he had any specific connection to Tree of Life or an order of application? Do not know that at this point. How old is the suspect in uh, he is a Pittsburgh resident. I don't know his age at this point. What sort of precautions are being taken entering his apartment right now? We would uh, take all precautions as we would with any search warrant. Um, we don't know if other uh, weapons are in there, um, but we would uh, proceed with caution. Is the bomb squad part of that process? We would put the bomb squad in any scenario like this where we would anticipate the devices, but we have no information at this point that there are NX or IEDs uh, present. How long was he in the synagogue before he was brought into custody? Approximately 20 minutes. What sort of condition is the suspect in? Is he speaking with law enforcement? Oh, uh, turn it over to Wendell. I will not get into whether or not he's speaking with the authorities. However, my understanding was he was transported to the Allegheny General. He's in fair condition with multiple gunshot wounds. Did he found any body armor? I do not have that answer at this point. Does anyone, do you have any investigators have that answer? Black jacket, you know, body armor? Don't know at this point. Can you tell us a little bit more about the service that was going on inside in the gunman? I, I don't I know a service was taking place. I'm not quite sure of uh, exactly which kind. Okay, there have been reports of the baby naming? Yes, we would heard that as well. But you, we can't confirm I, that. I can't confirm that at this time. Was the gunman shot by police or were the self-inflicted gunshot wounds? We believe it was police, but uh, definitive um, determination will have to be done with the, uh, the investigation being conducted by the FBI. We do not. Uh, we're hoping to have a follow-up press conference tomorrow, and at that time a representative from the medical examiner's office will be there. Are the children were killed? Is that what somebody said? There are no children were among the deceased. Children? I'm sorry? Were children among the injured ones? I don't believe so. Were they present? Um, we are still talking to the many witnesses at this point. So. Did the gunman shout anything before he opened fire? We don't have that information at this point. Are, are local synagogues in Pittsburgh on lockdown at this time? I don't know about lockdown, but we will certainly make sure that the information is passed so they can take nece necessary precautions. Should people of the Jewish faith in Pittsburgh be worried or be on alert, or do we think that the threat has been? We think the threat has been eliminated. Again, we don't, uh, we don't think that anybody has been associated with this gunman, but we'll continue to look at all angles uh, in the conduct of the investigation. Uh, if I could just follow up on that. Pittsburgh Bureau of Police have been notified of numerous services that are being conducted, including a vigil tonight, and we will have adequate police protection at those there was sites. Was security at the synagogue this morning, or was there? Not that we're aware of. Last question. What can you tell us about the suspect's movements inside the synagogue and what he actually did when he went in there? Um, but, but after he entered the synagogue, it looks like at that point he uh, murdered the 11 uh, prisoners. Uh, I believe he was exiting or in the process of exiting the synagogue when a Pittsburgh uh, uniformed officer engaged him. That Pittsburgh officer was subsequently wounded. Uh, he withdrew, and as he withdrew, the defendant or the suspect went back into the synagogue in order to uh, hide from SWAT officers who were moving towards the scene. And that's all we know at this point. And what's his status medically? Is he injured? He is. And I'm sorry, one clarification on the weapons. You mentioned an assault rifle and three handguns. Do you know the caliber of those weapons? I, I don't know that at this point. We'll look at the uh, crime scene in detail this evening and no more. And I'll update you in the morning. I don't know that at this point. Thank you, everyone.